It's October and the students of London College of Fashion's BA Honours degree in Fashion Design and Realisation are starting their final year. Through the course of the four-year flexible learning programme, which is designed to fit around their careers and other commitments, they've learnt strong graphics and research skills and they've gained an understanding of the practical and aesthetic sides of a career in the industry. Now they're about to start their final major project, a portfolio of garments and written work which will be their launch pad into the fashion business. Cut on the bias. My name is Mihaela and I'm Communism. My name is Christina and I am Storytelling. My name is Beverly and I am Transformation. My name is Paulina and I am Reinvention. My name is Mariam and I'm Shaped by War. My name is Radana, I am Urban Myth. My name is Katie and I am Dystopia. It's going to be a long year of conceptualising, testing, tweaking and making. Each of the students is taking a different visual approach to the design elements of the pieces that will end up in their collection, experimenting with different ideas to get there. For our final hand-in um, for the degree, we have a project proposal and a workbook, and the project proposal element is all about the research, building up a concept. My concept is dystopia. Some really powerful images that I, I developed were um, shadows of fireworks, so trying to capture the tail end of the, the smoke from the fireworks um, and then recolouring them in Photoshop. And I've been able to use some of these images um, as prints in my final collection. I found a good way of moving forward was to take a suit jacket, so a, a classic symbol of conformity in our world, and to do lots of draping on the stand with it, so turning it upside down, removing the arms, all this kind of thing. And for some, it's intimate personal experiences that drive their creativity. Why did you choose war? Uh, because I have a personal connection with this, mm -hmm. where I've come from, I've right. come from Afghanistan. Yeah. It was in the core of war, I've yeah. seen it, I've lived yeah. it. And, um, I thought that might be why you mm -hmm. chose it, so no, yeah. that's, that's yeah. a good reason to choose it. It's a good way of you dealing with it as well. <laughs> this is the images of my own flat. Mm -hmm. I took the pictures last year. I was back home. It, it was um, uh, actually left um, uh, for years. Yes. These are some of my own images. So really nice. Yeah. And it's quite a nice use of it. The concept is about communism because I come from a um, communist background. I've translated this into the fashion world through prints, through design development. It's, I've looked into surveillance and hiding, lack, lack and absence, um, type of surveillance, um, biometric surveillance, types of punishment and, and um, torture. These were my initial um, silhouettes. <laughs> At the same time as working out their designs and patterns, the students have to consider the silhouettes, helped by Leonora Eggington, final year pattern cutting tutor, and Jessica Saunders, course leader for the BA in Fashion Design and Realisation. So, Unless, so I just wait and ask you, what you know, you had some kind of seeming detail there and then you were able to cut this on the bias. Mm. But you know, but double it so it so it kind of rolls. The difference between having a good idea and making a successful piece is tricky to find, as the students discover. Which actually works really, really well, and that's much more exciting than your toile. And if I were you, I would work with this mm -hmm. because this is much more contemporary. They also have to think about who their audience is and who's going to buy the end result. And this is another possibility. You're going to have to be really, really careful on the proportions of these areas because you're kind of really emphasising the areas that, that most women are conscious of. You know, is your backside too big to expose? Is your, here you're kind of exposing the tummy area and they're the two key areas yeah, the two that mm. most the women area. are going to be like, oh, I don't want to be showing mm. that off and actually you're making a real feature of it. So essentially you're going out in a pair of hot pants or a yeah. pair of pants. And, and then that would kind of lead you who, who's your customer and how yeah. old is she. 
because it, to me, that would be somebody who's really going to be quite young. Mm. Mm. So perhaps do so something else. Yeah, there's plenty you can do. It's just a matter of looking and thinking and working and trying and experimenting. I think when you look at your work, some of your images are great. I just don't think you've, you've done enough of the sort of the 3D experimentation. What you've done is it's come from your head, but actually you need to work with some of the images. So let's have two twirls next week. Let's have a reinterpretation of this in the proportions that you've got there. And let's have an interpretation of this. And then go from there and bring some pleating. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm exhausted, Mariam. You've worn me out. <laughs> <laughs> to bring the reality into fashion realisation, the students have a session with designer and show producer Deborah Britz, who will help them make sure they create pieces that stand up to criticism. Um, my big bugbear is lots of different hemlines. I've mentioned that to a couple of you already. I hate it when someone's making four garments and one is a mini and one stops just above the knee and the other one is somewhere vaguely in the mid-calf area and I think there's nothing worse than that because you end, I end up looking at that almost like a graph mm -hmm. rather than looking at the individual garments and I will, you know, if you, if you iron out those little details you look at the, the collection and then you start analysing each garment and that's what you want people to do you want them to look and see the details that you've put in not the accidents that you've allowed to stay Deborah, who has worked worldwide with renowned designers such as Vivian Westwood and high street brands like Marks & Spencer, delves into some practical considerations that the students might not have thought about. So if you laser cut into that sort of colour and then put my skin under it, it's not going to look great. If you get black skin under it, it would look fabulous. So that would change it as well. So if you're laser cutting into a charcoal leather and then put pale skin behind, again, you're going to get something that looks fabulous. But in some cases, like for Katie, happy accidents are a part of the process. Very messy toile was a top. When I made the pattern for it, it quite obligingly makes all sorts of pleasant shapes. <laughs> um, I love that. That's fantastic. I've got a few pieces that I've really just started to work on. So now I've got some good ideas of how to extend those, take them further. To give the students some perspective, their work in progress is exhibited in a public showcase called the Eye Critique. Invited are staff and students from the London College of Fashion, plus invited industry guests, friends and family. The Eye Critique was set up for final students to have a really interesting alternative view of their work in progress. So they've had to set it up in an exhibition space and it gives them a chance to step back and look at it in a completely different context and maybe make a few decisions about what to take forward and maybe what to leave behind. It also gives people who've never seen the work before a chance to look at it and comment and then we get their comments and they have no background knowledge of what it is, they're just reacting to what they see. So you do get some very interesting ideas and thoughts that perhaps we as tutors or the students themselves hadn't really thought of. I think it's something that I would also like when I do go into my fourth year because it's always good to see a fresh, fresh perspective. With graphics and prints developed, progress is being made and it's time for the students to work towards prototyping their garments. Jessica Saunders is still on hand to guide them in the right direction and help iron out any problems. But this is a bit more challenging and more now, I think. It's very challenging. Yeah, it is. But it's good. That's what you need. It is. I mean, you've you got two primary colours. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, and you've made it work there, so... Thanks. The reason that this has a nice 3D element to it is because it's small and it's being pulled out of it. As soon as you extend these and make them bigger, it just goes flat because there's it goes nothing... flappy. Yes, there's nothing sort of pulling it into that 3D shape. Any relevance here? No. Now? No. No? No. <laughs> so we have a dress. Yes. <laughs> this. Will one be having yeah, more in one dress? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, Yes. You're doing three, aren't you? Yeah. But I think you should design six, um, but you make three. Yeah, that's fine. So you must think in terms of range. Is it all fading? Is there more that where this is coming down, is it all going to dribble down? Is it 
you know, how's the... You know, so before you go anywhere, that needs to go beyond an A3 page. Absolutely. The part-time courses spread over four years. Soon enough, it's the end of the first term. Handing in the formative submission means that the finish is nearly in sight. Um, today is the end of this term and um, we are handing in our formative um, assessment. So for that we need to have our lineup and also um, one garment and two professionally done. Develop the necklines because they are all a little bit similar. Yeah. See what's quite clever about this is I know you've done it in Photoshop so the stripe goes right the way across. It can. Can you engineer can, your pattern yeah. so that it's... Well, and I can engineer the, the print. Because that would be great if you engineer the print. The students should have one completed garment each for Jessica and Leonora to review. But in some cases, there are still problems that need working out. And just putting a print on, print isn't going to solve your kind of pattern cutting issues. When you think about your concept and what it's about and all the imagery that you've got, this is kind of really out of place. Yeah, I know that, yeah. But try lots of different finishes on, on this. How do you feel, Christina? Do you feel like you are kind of getting there? Yeah, I think it's just understanding the translation between what you draw and what you produce. So, you know. What you must do, and it's the same thing, everybody does it, is that kind of thing where you've drawn something, you've designed it, you even twirled it, essentially, and then you make something different. Mm. So that is there, and the information is there. So what you need to do is be able to translate that. The BA in Fashion Design and Realisation isn't just about the end product, it's also about helping the students find their own professional method. It's almost like you need to just create mm -hmm. on the stand and then draw what you're creating. And so you're communicating it back. Most people work this way, some people can't because what they're, what they're putting down on paper and what they're getting out the other end isn't what they want to, but ultimately design realisation is about realising your ideas, but the way you communicate them is crucial. I think that you always have a conflict between how you imagine something and how you want something to look yeah. and it being a clever, complex enough pattern that you feel it's worthy and very often you have an idea of how something will look but you don't feel that it's worthy because the pattern is not clever enough and then it ends up being something different. Yep. And I think there's probably something in accepting that for the majority of people looking at it, it's aesthetically what it looks like rather than it being a clever pattern. It's mid-March. The students are making progress, but not quickly enough. They should be much further along if they're to complete their projects on time. It's up to Jessica to give them a reality check. We had a deadline last week, um, you know, and we all have a nice time and it's all great, but actually we put these deadlines in for a reason. Yep. And really we should be at the point now where you are manufacturing your final collection. Mm -hmm. We've experimented like crazy, you know, the research is there, you are pretty much on track in terms of, you know, you've all got something good going on. You're just not going to do yourself justice. You've spent four years here. You know, you want to finish with a bang. You don't want to finish with, oh my God, well, I just about managed to throw it together because I've left it all a bit late. The pressure is mounting on the students to make their designs into a finished product. It's April and time to fit the garments with the help of fit model Lauren. Seeing their prototypes brought to life will expose even more issues and realities that must be dealt with before final submission. Debate continues about some garments, with more amendments to be made if they're to meet the tutor's expectations. These are the outfits that I've actually made. And this is a back opening coat, which you can step out from. That, that doesn't offend me as much as this, because mm. this makes it really look like an afterthought. So, you can, you can still, have you got any more fabric? I mean, I know it's quite a bit of work, no, I think once you get rid of that extra there, which is, that's what's really bothering me, because it just looks like you've stuck a zip in. Can I just check with you on the, the pattern exactly how you do it then? Who's um, ready to put clothes on next? You just, you just draw a line there.
Part on the bias. By the time they finish, the students on the part-time course will have been working for four years. All the students are at different stages of completion with their work. There's only three weeks left to go, so it's time to finalise the garments ready for submission. Last-minute complications aren't making anybody's life easier. That information needs to be on here because then when you make it or someone else makes it for you, you get what you want. You don't get a version of it because they don't have all the information. It's the last push, so it's, it's really difficult because the level of stress is, is really, really high. If that was intentional, I haven't got a problem with that. So at this point in time, I'm actually um, behind. Would you buy it like that? It will be stressful, you know it. It's just when it hits, it hits and there's nothing you can do about it. I've nearly finished one dress, so the others are twirled, so I've just I've got to make them now, basically. You think that you're being more organised than normal, and more organised than normal isn't really sufficient. They need to link as a collection more than just the print. I'm not in the kind of mood to talk today, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm mainly feeling tired. Um, I have lots left to do and we have three weeks left. It's been a long way, it's been really, really exciting and it's been really, really hard work. So yeah, just keep sewing, 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 sewing. The students are on the home stretch. With different combinations of finished garments and written work to hand in, they're working all hours to bring everything together on time. The end is in sight, but everything has to be spot on, because once it's in, there'll be no chance to change. June the 2nd, and it's hand-in day. Four years of hard study is soon to come to an end with a signature on a piece of paper. That one. Oh, that's my final. The last sheet. Four years. But so rewarding. And now I'm going to have a drink, get some sleep, and enjoy the sun. Two bags. There's six bags in total. Two portfolios, and I'll leave the portfolio of all my flight work, all my um, patterns. We've done it. That's it. I've just handed in, um, feels great, life goes on and I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and have a glass of champagne. I <laughs> slept for two days, having eaten. For some, the race to the finish didn't happen quite as they planned. This belt was done in the last minute, yesterday. I cried over it because the print was done wrong. I left it till the end but then when I got the prints it was red. So I was like, this is wrong, I don't have anything red in my collection. And she was like, yeah, mistakes happen, uh, it's human error, that's why you shouldn't leave things to the last minute. But now the colours are perfect and I'm happy with it. How are you right now? Okay. Hungry, thirsty, sleepy, happy. But the degree is at an end, and with everything handed in, all the students can do is sit back and wait for their results. It is hard, but it's really worth it, and they do very well in the end. Cut, 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 cut. With the course over, the students can relax, but there's no such luck for the clothes. This year, their work will be showcased in an exclusive fashion film, which you can find by looking for Knockout from the London College of Fashion online. Oh, 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 oh,